So uh, milk exports. Those of you who know what milk looks like, <laughs> I'm sure there are those who don't like milk. Don't worry. So milk exports have increased uh, from uh, 60 million US dollars in 2016 to 131 million US dollars uh, this year, 2017, 2018. Now, that is a very interesting thing. It, it has more than doubled. These are the exports that have more than doubled. I have with me Paul Boucherizi. Paul, welcome to the show. Thank you. How have we done this? Well, I imagine it's a, it's a, a long story. Uh, <laughs> Uh, but the sh I think the long and short of it is that um, we produce so much milk, yeah. but little of it is uh, processed. So I suspect what happened is just that we've processed a bit more that is then exportable. Ah. I think that's just yeah, what we did. Yeah, uh, according to that, I read that 80% uh, of the milk produced is marketed. And only 33 of that milk is processed. Yeah. So you can imagine... You know, at a very simplistic level, it looks like if I just came and put a processing factory here, the milk is available. Because yes. uh, what they call, of course, raw milk is the one you we we buy straight from the farm, mm -hmm. and you go and boil. And you, some people don't boil, but mm -hmm. you know, the safe thing is to boil it and drink <laughs> it. So imagine if you just collect even that. So I think that's what's happened. I think uh, uh, the processing capacity has just increased in the last one year or so. And you know what is interesting that there was a bit of uh, weather issues and then they say that the milk production increased from 2.08 billion liters in 2015 to approximately 2.5 billion liters 2017-2018 indicating a 6% annual growth rate. Yeah. But we had a bit of a weather issue. How did we manage to beat this? No, I think uh, the weather issue was uh, more in 2016. So yeah. that's when we did uh, 2.08 uh, uh, billion liters. So mm. it obviously affected uh, milk production, but n clearly not by that much. Because when the rains have come back, we've added another 400 and about 400, 420 million liters, yeah, according yeah. to those figures. Yeah. So I think also the people who are rearing cattle are beginning to be able to manage um, this uh, mm -hmm. drought situation mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, because obviously if it's only affected that amount it's less than um, a fifth of production sure. so clearly our guys are investing in uh, water um, catchment uh, technologies you know maybe they are linked up to water infrastructure that kind of business so it's making it so much easier for them to keep Growing. And of course, the, we know, we've seen, like, for example, the New Visions Harvest Money, the technologies around uh, feeding are improving. People are, uh, people are what they're calling storing, what they call silage, which is, um, you know, grass and vegetation yes, yes. stored for longer periods. So you can see that sector, things are moving at a quite interesting pace. Uh, however, of the 80% milk, 80% uh, of the milk produced, 67% is sold in raw form. Yeah. Where is the problem? Well, I think it's just, uh, I suspect, one uh, lack of information, mm -hmm. amazing as that sounds, but um, uh, lack of information. I mean, you know, we don't have to, I imagine, not I imagine, I think it's possible, you don't have to process milk in Uganda to sell it in Uganda. If Ugandans don't drink it, you can export it. So, uh, for example, powdered milk, which is just uh, dehydration of the milk, removing all the water and leaving it in powder form, yeah. as market, you know, all over the Middle East and for any people who, you know, need uh, are, are not close to milk for uh, long periods of time. So, so, so what are we not doing? Why? Ha what are the opportunities that we should ought to do? No, I mean it's interesting. In? I mean, if you think about it, that um, uh, you produce, uh, let's say, hundred liters. You only process 33 percent, 33 liters of this. That means mm -hmm. 67 liters are there for the taking because they are marketed. Remember, they said 80 yeah. percent of that. So all the, so this 67 percent is there for the taking. It's, it's, it's marketed, and uh, y you know probably it's just how do you set up? Maybe people just, I mean, setting up processing plants is also a new thing, relatively new thing. So yeah. maybe our, our investors or our local investors are not yet switched on to this. Uh, opportunity, but it's a great opportunity if you think about it. But know. is it a great venture? 
No, imagine so. Um, in, in the same report you are reading, they were saying that um, Ugandans consume about 60 liters per, day, per year, uh, per person. So every Ugandan on average consumes 60 liters of milk. Mm -hmm. But the World Health Organization recommended minimum is 200 liters. So I think the market is there. It's even locally. It's just that uh, we're not getting, we're not, we're not seeing we're it. We're I think, too clearly. comfortable. Yeah, I think so. I mean, I think milk so. has been here. It's yeah. as if those, it's one of those things. Like you know, it might come to a point where, like, um, probably in other maybe developed economies, they mm. just set a rule that you cannot consume raw milk, and then you know we just have to convert all this milk into processed milk. Huh. You'd get in trouble with the Ugandans, especially in the, the Kato corridors. Ah, well, you know, it only starts with trouble, but people will switch on and we move on. Wow. <laughs> but you, you see, see the, you see so the beauty. You see, the, the, the thing we need to think about, I think, even as a country, is that even why a thing like that, mm -hmm. as ugly as it sounds, <laughs> should happen, is if you, if you bring processing capacity to Uganda, right. Those farmers, okay, you ca you're already seeing it. There used to be years when, during the rainy season, farmers would even pour the milk because there was yeah, no market to take. Now absolutely. at least they are pouring less and less of it every year. Mm -hmm. So if you bring all this processing capacity online, not only will all the farmers who now have cows uh, pr uh, get, their market, get their milk sold, but will even produce more because other farmers, hey, there's a market, other yeah. people, there's a market, they're going to the, into the thing. So it is to our... Uh, Short term people will complain and grumble, but no, you do it for the long term, you know. But you know, people actually consume less and less milk lately. Mm, Saying uh, health problems. That's just an excuse for being broke, I think. Oh God, Paul. <laughs> All right, there you go. Uh, so milk, there's milk, there's 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 a lot of potential in our milk, and we have a lot of milk, and ours is still real milk. Organic. Organic, yes, that's the right <laughs> word. So you could. Buy a few cows, see how you can, you know, get some milk to export. Perhaps you might... You no, know. they'll sell to collection points. A yeah, call it. There are 461 in the country and probably not 461? enough. 461? Yes, and probably not enough even then. There's still not enough if you can you only get 33%. Yeah, so imagine, no, so if you get that 3%, so that means you probably need thrice as many. Uh, yes. yes. So you probably need 1,200. 1,300 of them. So there's opportunity. And talk about opportunities. Yes. There's opportunities in that whole value chain of milk. There's those collection centers. There's transporting the milk. You don't just transport it. You have to now transport it. There is um, going into the production itself. There's the production of feeds. There's breeding. You know, there's, I have a friend who, he says me, I'm not going to be, my milk is a byproduct of my process. Mm -hmm. I am just a breeder. So he's, he's specialized in breeding dairy cows. So he's the one you go to to buy the cow. Ah, mm. you after he giving me the number. Absolutely. Great. Well, that's it. Thank you so much, Paul. <laughs> You're welcome.